Bible Baptist Church with a message out of God's Word from Pastor Kim Hayes. 27, Psalm 27, thank you. It was my fault. Psalm 27, beginning in verse 1. Certainly, uh, hearts go out to that mother. get information like that right before you preach you're kind of got a, got a little bit of a thought that the Lord has something for us to consider today every service takes on an own, its own personality because this is the Lord's word and it's the king's business and we are literally on holy ground this is not there's not nothing about nothing about what we do is can, is for any entertainment or trying to fill space or see this word is eternal and the god that wrote it and authored it through the hands of men upon this earth has something for us today I just believe today that if we'll open our hearts to what he wants, he'll, he'll certainly fill, fill our hearts. I'm going to have you remain seated. We're going to read the whole chapter. And on the last verse, would you stand? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies... And my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have, have, I, one thing have I desired of the Lord that, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, Will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy? I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Father, I love you. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for this word to our soul's nourishment. And Lord, I want to yield to the wonderful work of the Holy Spirit of God in this room, in every single heart. Lord, we'll pray you'll do the work needed. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Our message today, just simply entitled, Wait, Waiting on the Lord. Take that last verse, Wait on the Lord.
I don't know if I'm the same way. I'm, I'm as human as anybody in the room. It's hard to, it's hard to wait sometimes. It really is. Yeah. How, many, how many have ever found that themselves in, in this situation? I mean, you get, you, I may be the only one in the room. You ever get impatient in a long line? Who said that? <laughs> Cheryl, no. I didn't say it, but I thought it. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, long lines. Check out. Anybody ever been to a doctor's office? Wait. Have you ever seen people camp out to get electronics on television? You know, they, they don't mind waiting. They'll wait, they'll wait there for days. I mean, it's an amazing thing. But most of us can't stand to wait in lines. I mean, the normal person, it's just kind of, just kind of irrigates you, doesn't it? You know, when you read this text... You, you, you literally find almost a split personality here. And it's the same writer, David, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. But it's almost like verses 1 through 6 are one person and verses 7 through 14 are another. If you really look at it. Because the first six verses, it's like David is on the high road. I mean, he is he's waxing an elephant. I mean, he's, he's, he's really... He's really extolling how much faith he has and how great it is. And all of a sudden, verse 7 rolls around. And what happened to the guy in verses 1 through 6? What happened to the guy? We was, it's, it's like blink your eyes and you're almost listening to a different fella. Because now he's crying out to God, don't hide your face from me. You and I, we, uh, we live in the same kind of mentality, believe it or not. There, you're looking in a mirror at yourself here. I, I'm talking, hello people, how many of you have faith? Saving faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. You've been born again, you're on your way to heaven. How many people like that in the room say amen? amen. Well then that's... That, that comprises a clear majority of folks in this room that are ready for heaven. And the only way that's possible is by faith in Jesus Christ. You remember an experience of divine life and light from above infusing into your soul at a moment in your life when you called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and received Him into your heart and you got saved. You, were, you accepted. You, you remember that new birth experience. You remember that. And, and it's a... It's a vivid recollection. I mean, it's not something vague. It's not something you just, you know, well, I hope so, preacher. I hope I'll be there. No, 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 no. You need to know, okay? Well, so people that are saved, you're looking in a mirror at yourself when you look at David. When you look at this text, you're seeing yourself the same way. Because I got to tell you, faith and fear live next door to one another. And I mean they're real close. They might even live in the same house. Because, listen to me, you can be high, and I mean you can be extolling the wonderful grace of God in a prayer to God, and all of a sudden something grips you called fear. It's an amazing process of our spiritual life that we are kind of fickle. Am I right? Am I the only one in the room kind of thinking like this? But I sense in David that he, he's, I mean, he's in verses 1 through 6. It's great. But then in verses 7 through 14, it's like, man, life can get tough. The bottom line is, what we're, going to, what we're going to rehearse today 
And I, I like the way he caps off in verses 13 and 14. That's how really, that's the bottom line for the Christian experience in this life. Get ready, everybody in the room, get ready. As long as you're planted here on, on as long as you're here on planet earth, as long as you're on your assignment, as long as you're still here, you're stationed here on planet earth, guess what? You're going to have to face some fearful things. And everybody in the room just batting down the hatches because it's going to happen, and it can happen in a blink of an eye. But I, I'm going to tell you, we end up in verses 13 and 14. But to get to verses 13 and 14, you've got to live life. You've got, you got to realize, oh yeah, there are high mountaintops. There are high times. But then there are low times. But the bottom line is, everybody in the room understand, if you don't get anything else out of it, here it is. God isn't a minute behind time. And I got something else to tell you. God's never in a hurry. He's got His plan. And His ways are higher than our ways. And we're the ones trying to fill in the blanks, not God. God's got every piece of the puzzle already mapped out. Everything's, it's, it's already there. But for you and I that are still here, it's like, okay. And I don't want to lose that because then it'll be a short message. But for you and I, we, have, we, we, we need help. Just like, just like we read here, and I think we're going we're gonna to get some ideas. I, I, I want us to remember Philippians 1 and ver, verse 6. Philippians 1 and verse 6. I'm going to interject some of these, and you'll have to find that one for me, Brother Gary. Philippians 1, 6. And I want you to listen to, look, look at this verse. Isn't this, isn't this a great verse Paul gives to the church at Philippi? He says, being confident of this very thing. Look at that confidence. How's this going to work out? How's this all going to, how, how's everything end up? Here it is. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, we got the back of the book. We know how this thing ends up, don't we? Hello. We are victors, not victims. God is still on the throne. God is still able. God still knows. But here, here's, what you've got to, here's what you've always got to recognize. And, and the first thing I want us to look at is the record of waiting. What about, what about, I know there's impatience, I, and I listen, we've got, a, we've got a Bible that's a record of humanity. Uh, you, you think about the, the first, uh, may, maybe one of the first instances of, we, we could think about Noah, brother Noah. Hey, God told Noah, said, go build an ark. You know how long it took him to build an ark? Hello, 120 years. Has anybody ever started a little project and wanted to finish it? Did you ever get a little bit impatient during the whole thing? Did something not fit here or something not fit there and you got a little frustrated? What do you think, Noah? In 120 years! Do you think he ever thought, I'll, oh, honey, he turned to Sister Noah every once in a while and after coming home from a long, long... I mean, hey, he... Can you imagine going down to Home Depot and ordering, he walked up the counter, I can just get this in my mind, he walked up the counter and asked the clerk, said, I need a little help. I've got, a, I've got this construction project I'm going to get on, and I need a little, I've got to order some material today. And it's his first time there. I mean, he has it all in his mind. God's given him the blueprint, but now he's got to go down to Home Depot. And so he orders, what kind of wood would you like, sir? Well, I'd like to order some gopher wood today. How much would you like? Well, I've got to get started, so... And can you imagine what all went on as he began to get gopher wood? Can you imagine what all went on as he began... And he'd go back, 
week after week. I know this is Kim Hayes talking. I know you're going, what in the world? But can you just imagine, first of all, gathering all the material together to build an ark? 120 years. Do you think he ever got impatient? And then once you're on the ark and you're the only one, you know, him and his family and the, all the animals. And, and then look, look at, look at, uh, look at, uh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, mine just worked so good back here, Gary. He's on it. Yeah, Genesis 7, 12. <laughs> and the rain was upon the earth, how long? 40 days and 40 nights. Well, that's just the beginning, folks. Now, you're on the ark. That's a better place to be than everybody else was, right? So you're glad to be there. But has anybody ever went on a cruise? Has anybody ever been on a boat for very long? Has anybody, huh? Do you understand? It, it's the hardest thing for Shirley to do, but she got me on a boat. And after seven days, I got to tell you, with a boat full of sinners, I am ready. <laughs> I am ready to get off to disembark the center boat. Anybody ever been there? I mean, it's a mission field, I got to tell you. There's plenty of them. The boat was full of them. You know what I'm talking about. But I'll tell you what, can you imagine 40 days and 40 nights? And then that's just not the end. Because now then, guess what? They got to just float around for a long time. Matter of fact, go to the next one. You already know which one I've got up there. And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days, five months later. 40 days, 150 days, 100. So now we're getting up into lots of months. Can you imagine? Waking up every day to the, I wonder what it smelled like on the ark. Hey, you know what it smells like in here. And we all showered up and shaved and got all prettied up, didn't we? Well, I tell you. Hmm. But that's just not it. Go to the next verses. God remembered knowing every living thing and all the cattle that was in the ark, with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of the heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was, was restrained. The waters returned from off the earth continually after the end of the 150 days and the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. By the way, isn't this a great record? Did you know this is God's record? Young people, this is God's record. You can trust it. You can believe it. And everything's going to be performed according to time. God's timing. Not ours. His. I don't know. Here's the scripture that says, The waters decrease continually until the tenth month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains, seen see at certain time. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark, which he had made. And he sent forth a raven, which went to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. And he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove had no rest for the sole of her foot, and the, she returned unto him. Into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth, and he put forth his hand, he took her, and pulled her in unto him in the ark. Look at this. And he stayed yet another seven days. Seven days went by, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. Look at this. And the dove came in unto him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. God's timing. It's all God's timing. He stayed yet another seven days, sent forth the dove, which returned not again from him any more. So seven more days. Go to the next verse. That's it. Yeah. Well, listen. When we think about this, days equal months. Listen to me. Equal years. You know, everybody in the room's here at a particular time in their life. 
a particular day, a particular month, a particular year. Everybody's got a time. The days of your life are, listen, numbered. And this is, listen, just one of them. And you get to spend it with me. <laughs> La da da, right? Wow. But you know what you've done? You've parked yourself down in a pew today, and you know what you're, you know what the Holy Spirit has an opportunity opportunity to do today? Speak to your heart. Very important day. Out of all the days of your life, this may be the most important. We have a record of waiting. You got Noah. How about, how about old brother Abraham? You know what he did? He was informed at 75 years of age that he was going to have a kid. His wife's 65. Did you know, listen to me, she had never had a child. Did you know it would be another 25 years before he had his promised son? Time, waiting. They got impatient. <clears throat> they come up with a plan. His wife Sarah said, take Hagar, the handmaid. I certainly can't have a child go in under her. They had a child, Abraham. Do you know that child's name was Ishmael? Do you know who Ishmael is the progenitor of? Do you know who Ishmael is the father of? The Arabs of this world. Hello? But then, God gave him Isaac. Timing. God's timing. Israel. God told Israel in the wilderness that you're going to have to... You're going to you're, because they, in unbelief, would not go in to the promised land. Ten spies came back with a negative report, but two, Joshua and Caleb, said, we can go in, we can possess it right now. Because of their unbelief, they had to spend 40 years wandering around a mountain, one mountain, until every man 20 years and above died. It took 40 years to do that. Joshua and Caleb, they had to wait 40 years. Do you reckon they, how about, I, I can only imagine, they, they, they were frustrated, they were impatient, but they had to wait. You go all the way through the Bible, I'm just giving you example after example, just building the, the message in your heart through the Holy Spirit, and here's the word that you read, is everybody has to wait. We're, you know, we're in a holding pattern right now. Everybody in the room that said, amen, I'm saved and ready for heaven. There's just something about everybody that says, amen, I'm ready for heaven. Are you wanting to get up a load today? Now, hey, I sat in the rapture chair, didn't I? I come in, I picked out a chair. Dave's teaching back in the back. He had all of his chairs labeled, and I picked out the, the one that had the rapture on it. I sat down in it, and nobody really cared, and they all thought I was silly. But I did. I thought, well, I picked me a good chair out, the rapture chair. I ought to go get it and sit in it. And you know what we're waiting on? The rapture. We have a record of waiting. That's what this book is, a record of waiting. They waited for the Messiah to come the first time, his birth. And now we're waiting again, aren't we? What are the requirements for waiting? We have a record of waiting. What are the requirements for waiting? Based on his book, I want to tell you, the requirements for waiting are just being here and being patient. And here's the instruction manual, by the way. This is all this is. This is your book for living. And here it is, the last two verses, Psalm 27. I had fainted unless... I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, what, you know what makes the difference? Listen to me. Here it is. Everybody, 
Everybody, listen, we need to focus on the Lord, not on our circumstances and not on our, what we call problems. Focus on the Lord. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And it sat down how long? Forever. On the right hand of God. So, we see the goodness of the Lord in the land. And then, verse 14, look at this. Wait. Here's, here's, what, here's what everybody has to do. And this is what we need to, need to realize today. The word is wait. It just simply means to not be impatient, but to wait on the Lord. Are you waiting on something in your life? Wait on the Lord. The Lord will bring it to pass. How does this thing end up, folks? About 100 years from today, where will we all be? I know that's tongue-in-cheek. I know that's kind of an unusual way of saying it, but literally what I'm telling you is, we're all going, we who are saved are going to be in heaven. Pretty good deal, isn't it? We know how this thing ends up. The requirements for waiting are just to live life. The moments, the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days, the weeks, the years, all of it just adds up to a lifetime, and it goes by that quick, very quickly, swiftly. What are the results of waiting? I like the scripture. <laughs> I like what he says. The results of waiting, David said, man, I looked around and I started looking, thinking about the Lord. And he's, he's my protector. He's the one that's t carried me through all the way. And there's, listen, there's nothing going to come against you that's going to over, overwhelm you to the place that you can't still trust him. Look at our brother Job. Can you imagine the patience of Job? You've heard that, haven't you? Yeah. He's a good one to look at, our brother Job. Afflicted, lost his health, wealth, and his family. But he still looked to the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. We're going to have courage. The results of waiting. Courage in the Lord. Strengthening of heart. That's why he says it twice. He begins with the word wait. And then he says, wait, I say, on the Lord. So what is the resource for waiting? Let's finish this. Let's think about it. What's the resource for waiting? God. <laughs> Our resource is from heaven. It's an unfailing. It's not going to falter. It's not going to fail. It's right on time. It's right on track. Everything about God is okay. And I want to assure you, there's, there's an assurance today from this message in Psalm 27 for everybody in the room that God isn't a minute behind time about what's going on in this world or anything else. We are so plugged in to the right one, <laughs> to the right word. And we've got it made, folks. We have peace, we have worship, we have joy, we have confidence, we have assurance that's found in these verses, and it ends up with, be of good courage, he shall strengthen thine heart. Verse 14, wait, I say, on the Lord. I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> You've been a little impatient lately? Is there something just not quite? I know we want things fixed right now. I know we want it all. I don't know about your heart today and how you have taken this message, but I would say this to you today. When David said, from his heart, he said, wait on the Lord. Best thing we'll ever do, just stop where we're at and say, hey, the Lord's the one in charge, not me. I think the longer you live, the more you know you're not in control. God knows the end from the beginning, the alpha and the omega, the beginning from the end. He knows. What is your heart today? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? 
If not, today's the day to get ready. You've waited all your life. Now you're going to meet the Lord today. Some young boys are ready for baptism today. I'm so thankful for that. They've been waiting. And now today they get to be baptized. Amen.